Okay, start. Uh, last time we talked about two years ago, um, we, we talked about the possibilities of um, running for the governor of your state. You were not quite decided yet. Um, what changed your mind? What's the deciding factor? Well, um, you said two years ago. Yes. Two years ago, the um, state of mind at that particular time is quite different from what we are experiencing right now. And um, if you see around, you see that um, there is no um, development as we expected, that we expect to see development. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, we cannot fold our hands and expect man to fall from heaven. When even to us are doing things very bad, then when good people fold their hands and do nothing, that will not change the status quo. And that's why I, I made up my mind and I decided and I said, I will give back to the community what I gave from the community. And what is it, especially that I gave from the community, uh, I gained the moral, I gained cultural uprightness, and I gain uh, trustworthiness. Of course, I gain all those from my parents. And, and I get the opportunity to, to, to study, to, to have good education. And I believe uh, as part of this society, I should give back and help people from this society. And that is the turning point. That is the most important thing that changed my mind. And I say, you know what? I have to contribute my own quota to help uh, the, uh, the needy people in our society. And that's what changed my mind. I said, yes, I'm going to go for it again, and I will fight to be the governor of Oyo State in 2019. Thank you. Have you picked a party yet? Uh, recently, I should have even told you that in, uh, earlier. Uh, we have a movement, and our movement is called Take It Back. And what is Take It Back about? Take It Back is not about Abel to Salami alone. Take It Back is a movement, and the coordinator of that movement is Omo Yele And uh, in 2019, by May 29, Shore will be the president of Nigeria, while I'll be sworn in as the executive governor of Oyo State. So, I take it back. We want to take back our dignity from this unscrupulous leadership. We want to take back what belongs to us. What is it? The true democracy. We want to make sure that the era of corruption will, if not totally eradicated, we will at least reduce it to the minimum level. Because the way the country, the country is being run now, is not encouraging at all. Don't trust me. Look at everywhere. Look around you. There's no improvement. So we want the young blood, we want the new generation to take back their future in their own hands. So we want improvement, we want development, we, we want to say bye-bye to corruption. And how do we get to this level? It, and since the inception of Nigeria as a uh, sovereign nation, we've seen a lot of difficulties, even from uh, independence in 1960 up to this present era. Um, I'll flash back and let you think back as not too far away. Let's talk about um, 1999. From 1999, to this present moment, there is no uh, specific dividend of democracy to our people. So that's why uh, uh, we come together, uh, take it back moment, we say we have to like, secure our future generation again, so that our uh, people, our oncoming generation, they will be proud of us. So that is the burn line. That is what taking back is all about. It's not about only a people salami. But I am the face of taking back in the state, and I promise you, come 2019, we will take it back. Our dignity will be back. And uh, initially, they used to call Oyo State uh, pace setters. We are not pace setting anything anymore. 
we are following other and which is pinpoint any state in Nigeria that we are following now. You can hardly say, except from Lagos State, that enjoyed the infrastructure that's been placed, that well placed since the time of Obafe Meonowo and our lives. So now, Oyo State is not based to anything anymore. So we we'll bring back that glory, which they used to call Okeobu as the food basket of Oyo State. That is not happening anymore. So uh, that is why uh, our taking back movement, we are we are employing everybody and we are calling all the youth and the young people to get involved. We get involved in the affairs of Nigeria so that we can build this nation. And one more time, we will reach that height. Thank you. Um, HEATH, this is your acronym, H-H-E-A-T. It stands for Housing, health, education, agriculture, and transportation. How um, you are basing your campaign on this? Tell us what you envision for Oyo State with this program. How you will help Oyo State progress? Well, uh, in the past, apart from if you flash it back quickly, in 1979, that was when we can really see what is going on in politics. You see uh, UPN, MPN, they have agenda. Nowadays, you see other political parties that we have now, hardly they say what they will do besides distributing money and uh, getting to the office and uh, increase their corruption level. Now, <clears throat> our agenda, as you actually said, is called HEAT. And these cardinal points, that is not the only thing that we will try to achieve, but at least that was the foundation. So we base it on uh, that foundation that at least we will start from there. Other things we follow through. Um, heat, the first, we double the H in front, is H, heat. The first H is housing. So you see, um, when you go around town, uh, people are suffering now. And according to Maslow hierarchy of needs, okay, uh, there are basic needs of human, uh, shelter, food. When you are well fed, then you think about shelter. Then when you are when you have shelter up your head, then you can think positively about how to improve and upgrade with your life. So in our plan now, at the first two years in office, we plan to 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 do a uh, public-private partnership about housing. So we will do at least 10,000 housing, affordable housing for people that are working so that uh, we will improve the economy of the state. And it is affordable one and it's doable. We have the way and manners how to do that. Um, that's about the age. And I will tell you, I'm just going to give you synopsis of what we do. Yes. I'm not going to go into details anymore because we started that and the federal government hijacked two points that we said. I'll quickly tell you this. First time uh, when we were, uh, I think it's Abeguta or somewhere, when Shure was uh, doing town hall meeting, we made mention about, somebody asked uh, him a question about uh, June 12 and he said that, okay, as soon as we get to the office, we will make June 12 as a democracy day. Two days after, federal government announced that and uh, the, the, the person president right now, Buhari, changed that and, and, and get that credit to himself. You know, that's number one. Number two, uh, Chowere said again that um, the minimum wage will be increased and two days after as well, uh, federal government came with a plan again and said they will increase the minimum wage. So we don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet, but we know how to get our things done. So that's the first age is the housing. The next one is health. At first, we believe that cleanliness is next to godliness. So our environment has to be super clean. In other state, for example, if you go around in Ibadan, which is the, uh, the capital city and the, and the capital for your state, you see it's, uh, it's all filthy. 
you see garbage everywhere. This is not acceptable. We will bring back the glory. So we will bring back the, um, what they call health inspectors, so that we clean, we will make sure that our surroundings are clean. The hospitals, again, in Oyo State, we have like three major local government. There's nothing bad having at least one dispensary each at each local government, so that it will be a lot easier. The health system will be accessible. People will have equal right to feed themselves. And besides that, we will make sure that prevent, pre prevention is better than care. So we will bring preventative aspect back into the health system so that people will enjoy better. That's about the health. Then E, that's education. Our education now, you will agree with me, even if you go to um, our universities, our higher institutions, all those tertiary institutions, you, if um, students, the so-called students of education, when you ask them to even to write a sentence of another foreign language, even Yoruba language, they cannot even construct a good sentence. So the education system has lost died completely. So we will revamp our educational system. Uh, vocational schools, or we will, we will try and train the teachers so that they will know what to teach the students. Um, uh, learning environment is not conducive enough. Everything is bad. Um, so the education system have to be, there, there must be complete overall of the educational system. That we know how to do. And the most important thing again is there will be free education from primary level to the first degree, starting from the day one. Can, can I stop you there and ask, when you say free, I mean there's free, there's qualitative, and there's quantity. Qualitative education, free education. And let me put this to you. If the parents, if they don't have ability and the way we to send their children to school, what will you call that? That will be kind of like quantitative, as you mm -hmm. put it. But government will be in charge of paying the tuition and making sure that quality education comes out from those schools. And the, uh, the, the environment, the learning environment, will be so conducive for the students so that whatever they are taught in there will be assimilated easily. So qualitative education will be provided from day one, May 29, 2019, from primary school to secondary school level. Uh, sorry, from primary school to first degree. It's doable. It's, it's been done all over the world. All these Western world developing countries, that's what they do. And we will, we will do the same thing here. It's, we can do it only because uh, our past leaders and present leaders right now, they don't see the importance of, of, of education. And that is where we are where we are right now. So that is about education. And the, the next agenda is A, which is agriculture. Any nation or any entity that will prosper, you have to be well fed. We, we cannot rely on importation of food. So we will improve the agricultural system in the United States. We will get back our own glory. They used to call us food basket of Nigeria. Where are we right now? To the extent that we even import uh, pepper, we import uh, vegetables. That is, you know, that is, that's not done. So why are we, why are we called the pay setters? Because people, uh, most states, even when we used to do the um, regional system of government, they rely on the western region for food. So everybody is now moving away from inner plant to the big cities, doing nothing. And they neglect the agricultural system. We will revive the agricultural system. We will make it lucrative for farmers. And to cap it up, I am a farmer now. And I'm an employer of labor here in, the, in Oyo State. So it is very, very profitable. And that is what we bring back. And from agriculture, remember I said earlier, I told you that um, according to the Maslow hierarchy of needs, if you are well fed, then you get shelter, then, then you can now be pinpointing on self-actualization. So 
That's about agriculture. And then the last one, but not the least, is T, which is the transportation. We will open the road networks. We will make sure that in the land, intercities, everywhere, trunk A, trunk B, trunk zeros are well in position. And again, there are probably not going to be new innovation like people are breaking houses or making new roads and all that. But what about the existing roads that we got? We have to fix it. We lost maintenance culture. That is not inclusive in the agenda, but in totality, that will be part and will be part of our program. We have to bring back the maintenance culture into our system. That is not, that is, you, you can see that. Even you see the roads that say that they, that they say they construct, when they construct road, the road will, be, will not last for like a year or so. Especially, see the road in front of our house here, we let's say you see port also already. It's not merely one year old road. So you when you give um, when you give contract, you give it to people that you don't give Bobby contract to a tailor. Do <laughs> you understand? So uh, techno technocrats have to be doing what they are perfect in doing. When what you are qualified to do, that's what you will do. So and besides all this, uh, the agenda that I mentioned, of course there is security, of course there is improvement in um, infrastructure and all that. All that will key in and we'll make sure that uh, there is no, we will negate corruption to the minimum level. So there must be accountability of everything that we do. Thank you. Uh, this leads me to the next question. Uh, we're talking about corruption and in Nigeria right now, godfatherism is a big deal. I mean, most times, I mean, if you don't have a godfather, I mean, people look at you and think it's not doable. Do you see yourself getting one or you're going to go alone with the, with the Take It Back movement? And how do you see yourself, I mean, um, impacting the community and for you to be well known? See, I, I've been waiting for that question. That is, that really touches me. Anytime um, the mention of Godfatherism in politics, that has always been from inception the problem of our political um, system in Nigeria. The, we embrace Godfatherism. I take it back, there's no Godfatherism. We do not believe in Godfatherism. We do not believe in money bag politics. So I take it back what we think what this is what is being practiced all over the world. I don't know why it's so difficult for us in Nigeria to see the reality in the actual sense. Okay, I've seen so many and all these politicians, these past politicians, they will come and they will buy people's votes. They buy people's votes with money and they will go and say they have one godfather in one particular area and they ask that man or that woman to deliver certain constituency or, or, or state for them. So what is wrong with individual, like the person, the actual, the politician that is very for the position? A, 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 a leader serves the people. It's not supposed to be the other way around. So if you use money and you have a godfather that you give money to, it means you take governance to be business. So that's why when people get into the office, they make sure that they get their money back. It's like they invest their money. So for this godfather is thing that has been what killed the system from the beginning. And it's high time that we say bye-bye to Godfatherism, bye-bye to Ghana must go money back politics. It is not working and it will never work. So we do not believe in Godfather. We do not believe in Godfather. And I'm telling you, believe in Godfatherism is the, uh, that is the advent of total destruction of the start of, of, of the system. In, uh, in, also, in uh, actual fact, that's even no system at all. Because if we have a system, things will not be going like that. 
So there's no uh, uh, there's no law and order. Even where, without the law, there's no way to 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 enact that law. There's no punitive action. When you do something wrong, nothing happens. See, the spirit of my people now calls me. I, I don't I don't what I'm doing. Why I give myself to be the servant of the people is not what I gain out of it. If it's based on what I gain out of it, I will see back in the Western world where everything works. All my children, they are all there. There's nothing for me to get in this, uh, get myself involved in the politics. Not to enrich my pocket. I can tell you categorically now that I will not suffer for the rest of my life. I've worked and I'm still working. So I don't see people that go to uh, governance and they go into politics to enrich their pocket, something seriously is happening to their brain. And like that, if we continue like that, we are not going anywhere. And you will, you will agree with me that that mindset has to be changed now. Otherwise, we will have ourselves to blame many, many years to come and our future generation, they will not have nowhere they can call a country. And the time is now. We have to start now. We have to change that status quo of money, politics, God vandalism has to be things of the past. New breed politicians should now come and embrace this style of politicking by, by being the servant when you are the leader. Our problem in Nigeria is far, is far from only the leadership. We are ourselves problem. People, the, the people that have been led, they even give themselves a way to be cheated like that. So, I'm sorry, I get so emotional when it comes to godfatherism and money back politics. That is no, we don't accept that, and that will never happen in our movement. Uh, so, how are you currently getting people to know about you, awareness, and what do you plan to do to get the popularity right now? Okay, so we've engaged ourselves in so many town hall meetings. We take it to the people that are here. We go, we, we, and, and we go inland. We've done so many town hall meetings. We engage so many stakeholders. So we let them know that this is what we are for. And uh, people ask us, uh, most of the town hall meetings, that uh, what political party are we going into? See, we deliberately, we definitely it has to be coalition of parties. And we do have parties that we're going to already. But we deliberately, you know, block it out so that we, we want to register politics of ideal and ideology in people's consciousness first. We want people to see the importance of not selling their soul for money or for one Congo of rice and four years of Ankara when all, all they, they used to get from all these old color politicians. We want that to resonate in people's consciousness first before we tell them that now you have to go this is our political party. And I promise you by the end of the week or rather the end of this month in July we will make we will now announce the party that will that will fly that will fly fly on. And of course, we cannot do election on that, uh, only take it back as a movement. There has to be a political party. And I promise you, we have a political party. And we mention, uh, we, we take the name of the party. Thank you. Um, I want to go back to one of your agendas, because this is really something that bothers me, and it's education. Education, when I see it, like you mentioned earlier, it's nothing in Nigeria, and we always say the our our children 
is the future, are the future of your state or Nigeria. But when the education is lacking, even when you look at the teachers teaching the students, I mean, they need to be educated. So, I mean, what would you do? I mean, I know you don't want to really let the cat out of the bag, but I want you to touch on some things that, I mean, when people hear, I mean, will be encouraged. Okay, first of all, remember I told you about the uh, condition of the learning environment. Yes. We have to make sure that it's conducive for the students. I've, I've, I've been to so many schools in, in Oyo State here. Some classrooms, they don't even have desks, they don't have chairs, they don't even, they, there's no windows. So, so how do you expect to learn anything in that kind of environment? That the government immediately will get into office, we will look into that. Again, there are so many teachers that they don't even have nothing to teach. You see so many teachers, they go to school and they start selling stuff because sometimes they will say they didn't get paid for X amount of months. That would not happen anymore. They have to be motivated to teach. And even we have to retrain all these teachers so that when they get back, when, so that what they will give to the, to the, to the students will be uh, great, great A knowledge, not archaic knowledge. It will be digital knowledge, not analog knowledge. So the teachers have to be retrained. It, it's, so, it's so touchy because we always say, as you said, uh, our children are the future leaders tomorrow. But if they are not well trained, who are they going to lead? And how are they going to lead us? And you see, uh, I know you must have experienced this um, scenario before. Either way, when you go employ artisans to do something for probably a plumber or an electrician or bricklayer, they do not, even when they give you uh, quotation, they don't even do it right. It's, they will make sure that it's either they cheat you or, or they cheat themselves. This is the system. So now, as I said, I said there will be vocational school that we will introduce. So all these artisans too, we will make sure we train them so everybody will be at least knowledgeable in whatever they're doing. So, you know, knowledge is power. If we do know how, if we, if we don't have enough and better education, we will not do things properly. And you see, uh, if you take uh, two people, for instance, if one has minimum education and the other one doesn't have education at all, the one that will prosper faster will be the one that has little education. So imagine if you have good sound and qualitative education. So I, I believe and I know for certainty that our state and our country will turn around and we join the Community of Nations as a progressive and developing nation, not an aggressive nation. Thank you. Um, this is just a question that comes to mind when you were talking. Um, is there enough money in the budget to accomplish all these agendas? Or will there be enough money? In the coffer of Oyo City, see? Yeah, yeah. You, you see, that's why I always get very, very careful with um, you in the media because you have a way to circumvent question and still bring it back. I told you I'm not going to let the cat out yes. of the box. But at the same time, yes, uh, you are, it's a very good question and I will put, I will, I will shed a little light on that. Every generation always blame the one before. So are the government. Every government, every new government always do blame the one before. They always lay claim and they always put the blame on the former or whoever they take the power from. Uh, and you know exactly what I'm saying, um, uh, the ruling party equals whatever ruling party is, uh, APC, same thing as PDP. There's no difference between six and half a dozen. Okay. Now, I told you we have ways, we have ways to raise the capital to do all our agenda and I will not 
say, how are we going to do it? But it's doable, I told you. Yes, as soon as we get it, we are not expecting a miracle. We know that automatically, when we get in, they will tell us that the cover of the government is zero. They will tell us that the pensioners, they are not paid for so many, many months. They will tell us that the teachers have not been paid for many, many years. We can see that it's evident where they will say the roads are not good, then how are we going to get money to do all this? Yes, it's possible. We know how. And we, that this is why we are, I said earlier that technocrats have to take charge. If you are a doctor, you have to be working in a hospital. If you are an engineer, either mechanical engineer, uh, electrical engineer, civil engineer, your field, that is where you'll be confined to to work. You cannot be an engineer and be given a uh, commissioner for F. It doesn't work. So we will make sure that square pegs are in square holes and round pegs are in round holes. It will not be vice versa. It's doable. Trust me, we'll be doing and we are confident that it's been done because it's been done in so many developing and developed countries. Why not Nigeria? We are 59 years for crying out loud. Every time election comes, that is where you see money in circulation. That is where that is where you see all these politicians come with big, big ideas. They will tell you they can do heaven and earth. Ask them how they will do it, zero. Our government, there will be zero tolerance for corruption and there will be, will be inclusive government we are by everybody we come together and put it together and see how we can make our country better again come 2019 make sure you get your pbc is very very important so that we can kick out the naysayers and the corrupt leaders out of power yeah. one last question one last question. Um, there are so many people in the field right now.